again, Sue, Laura, thank you for joining us today. So, can you introduce yourselves and give us a quick overview of both of your backgrounds? Uh, I'm John Sujanja. Um, I am a moral philosopher. I have a PhD in applied ethics. And I am the founder and the director of AI Ethics Lab, uh, which is a lab where we help businesses to discover and solve problems in ethics that they might run into in their projects or in the field that they are operating in. My name is Laura Ile. Um, I'm also a philosopher. I am currently a fellow with the Harvard Philosophy Department. And I work in the intersection between ethics and knowledge and technologies. OK. So with backgrounds in ethics, how did you become interested in AI? Actually, my approach is not uh, in philosophy is not really limited to ethics. I, I think I approach AI from a lot of different philosophical perspectives. Um, a lot of it has to do with knowledge. How does different technologies um, prescribe different understandings of what knowledge is and what are the more like broader societal consequences of that? Um, so in the end, they are even the questions about knowledge are in the end ethical questions because they have um, consequences that go beyond like okay. knowledge definitions. Um, and I come from uh, moral and political philosophy, and I've been working a lot in the intersection of ethics and health. Um, so I did a lot of work in health policy, healthcare, and health technologies. And in health technologies, we start seeing a lot more AI systems uh, coming into this, to the field. Um, so I started with actually looking into the um, ethical questions that arise in health sy healthcare systems that use AI. And from there, it sort of opened up the door to go to the ethic, AI ethics across sectors. So now it's uh, more general, not just limited to healthcare. Nice. OK. So could you tell us a little bit about the ethics mapping workshop that you just did? Yeah, so um, we started the, we developed the workshop, uh, the mapping method, um, with two main goals in mind. Uh, one was to show that it's not just about, uh, when you talk about an ethical problem, it's not just about saying this is wrong, but actually you need a structured analysis on um, what are the um, issues there. And the second one is that it's usually a complex problem that involves a lot of trade-offs and you have to be able to really see what you are giving up for what and what are the values that you are endorsing. Um, um, so the workshop itself is uh, really like an interactive problem solving sort of game. It's really fun to do for us and I think <laughs> I hope also for the people who are doing it. Um, and as Janssen said, it's really um, important for us that people walk away from there having some idea of, in a way, what ethics is. That it's not just like an intuitive feeling that something is wrong and then the job is done and everyone can go home. But it's really, it really does take a lot of work and a lot of structure and how do you um, analyze it in a structured way? And how do you face these problems if you face them in your business or whatever? Um, so that is basically what we're trying to um, achieve. And, and it's, it's like a game. Yeah, it's like a game. So that very helps visual. the, it's very visual and it helps um, us as well as the uh, participants to engage wi with each other as well. Not just with the question, but they, um, they form teams, they uh, ask, like they, they learn from each other, both in terms of ethical approaches, but also technical approaches. So we make sure that we also incorporate the technical solution into the ethical question. Um, yeah. Because for us, of course, yeah. it's really important to make use of their expertise as well. And a lot of them are, have a lot of technical expertise, and we want to get that out, and not just like lecture them about ethical <laughs> issues. Yeah. And by the end of it, we want them to be able to um, have this structured visual um, image in their mind when they see the next ethical problem. When, they say, when somebody says this is bad, they don't just say, say, OK, yeah, yeah, it is bad. But they actually think, OK, but like, what are the other options? What are the trade-offs in there? Why is it bad? Yeah, all of them. Yeah. OK. So what do you think needs to be done to ensure that AI systems are ethically sound? <laughs> well, <laughs> so um, first of all, I think one thing is um, 
ethics needs to be incorporated. It should be integrated into the whole research and development uh, stages of uh, AI systems. So usually it's a tag on in the end. Like you're done with everything, you're about to get the product out, and then you're like, oh, what's Or in the beginning. Or in the, just in the <laughs> beginning. Like they just ask the question before they start doing the research. Like, is this ethical? Okay, then forget about it and move on. It's not like this. You're, it, it has to be a part of the research, design, development, updating, manufacturing, uh, commercialization. Like all of them have ethical, different ethical questions um, involved, and you cannot just answer them once and forget about it. Um, and for that reason, you need this. Um, you need to have ethics. Um, just like design is a part of technology development, ethics is a part of technology development. It is not an outside thing that adds on to it. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that we need a chief ethics officer? <laughs> for, yes, yes, from what I started <laughs> off with. <laughs> I, think, I think that follows from what you just said, <laughs> that um, I think we would both actually go even further than that and say, Yes, at least you need that. Because if you are integrated in the whole process, you need somebody who's able to do that. But also it's, um, it's kind of like if you were talking about law in, in the same kind of companies, you wouldn't go like, is there a pamphlet we can read and then we can do the law after reading the pamphlet? And, or you wouldn't say like, should we hire a lawyer? Yeah, you should hire like a whole bunch of lawyers. Yeah, not you know? just one, not right? Just like one. it's not just like chief lawyer, and then you're done for this. I don't know, gigantic company. You would have like, do we need a law team? <laughs> it's similar. Yeah, I mean, I think for the companies who really do take this serious, they do need to integrate it on a whole different level than than so just from the like top to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, that ethics is a. I mean, ethics is a huge field in philosophy. It's something that you study for a very long time. It's not something that, it's not about reading a pamphlet and then you can do it just as law or physics. It's not something that you just like read the pamphlet and do. I think um, a lot of the times we get, we get to, we are asked the question, um, is there a checklist? Could you give us a checklist so that we know that we are doing something ethical? And this is interesting because this shows how they see ethics. You know, like you would, again, you would never say to an engineer, could you give me a checklist whether I got the code right? No, there's no such thing. I, I need to look at it. I need to look at how your code works, the accuracy of it. I need to look at it, right? Or the law. I need to look through what you have done, not like a checklist. Um, same with the pamphlet. You would never say, give me a little, can I like read these two articles on law and my company will be safe from all legal problems? No, you wouldn't. So. If you are taking ethics seriously and not just recognizing ethical problems, that you can sort of do with training sessions and so on. The mapping is a one of them that helps, but actually solving ethical problems, really discovering them and solving, you need to act as if this is. Um, you don't. You shouldn't consider this like a add-on, as I said, but like like any other part of your company, like law or engineering or design. It's a part of it. I think one thing that does lead to the add-on perspective is that the companies have this, uh, often have this view that oh. it's a trade-off with profit, for example, or success, which I think is a really a mistaken or a wrong way to see it. Because, of course, if you have a very short perspective, but <laughs> if you have a longer perspective, the costs of having an ethical catastrophe, like some of the ones that we've seen lately, are immense for any company. And another thing is that these companies also live from the loyalty that they build up with the user. And, and the that loyalty does depend on trust. And the trust depends also on how they treat the, the ethical questions. So I think even for a company, even if we're talking profit maximization, I think ethics is uh, essential to their business. Yeah. Okay, great answer. So what have you enjoyed most about the summit so far? Well, I learned so many new things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we get to see what are the new technologies that are developing or which direction that they are taking. And um, that's very, very interesting, both because, I mean, obviously we are interested in technologies. That's why we do ethics in relation to technology and AI. <laughs> so we get really excited about the new technologies. Uh, and also we realize that there are so many new problems, new questions that we would like to work on. <laughs> so we realize that our um, area is expanding as we see the talks and <laughs> yeah. and also we had just a lot of really interesting and good conversations yes. with so many yeah. people
Yeah. yeah. Great. So, what's next for both of you in your line of work? Well, <laughs> since this also ties up to what we just said, that you see all these new things um, arising, and I think that the role, the, a lot of the companies are realizing that they really do need to take the ethics part seriously. So, we'll be really busy just doing the workshops in a, a lot of different settings in the coming time and so the one that we did here was a two hour workshop we also have much longer versions um, yeah yeah so we have um, we work I mean in AI ethics lab also we work with um, businesses um, in their particular projects um, about the ethical questions that they face but also help them as I said see the ethical issues within the, the, the technology or within the field that they are operating in and that's one part of it, that, like the workshops, the, the seminars that we do, but also the mapping, the training, uh, training the employees for awareness and how to approach the ethical questions. Um, this is the one we did here, of course, was one question that we picked up and we, uh, we had it with people who are interested, but we also do um, tailor it to the company that we are working with um, looking at a particular question that they've been w working on and do the mapping with them. And as you said, this is the two-hour version. We have um, longer ones that are uh, more um, for the needs of the company. So we'll be busy with those. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.